Greetings trackers. I'm here to talk to you about mountain lion versus dog tracks. These species are often found in similar habitats and their tracks can be very difficult to tell apart without looking super closely and recognizing some of the characteristics that both share and some of the very subtle differences between these two species. So one of the first things that pops to mind when you talk about dogs versus mountain lion tracks is claws or the lack of claws. And claws will show up in mountain lion tracks and sometimes they will not show up in dog tracks. So claw presence is not necessarily the one and only characteristic to rely on when you try to identify the tracks of these two species. So looking at these tracks on the right, they do have very obvious clear blunt claw marks and the ones on the left do not. Um, there are some other things to look for but I will tell you that the ones on the right are dog and the ones on the left are mountain lion. So let's look a little bit closer and learn what tells you that these are mountain lion versus dog. So when we look at these tracks of a mountain lion, and these are both hind tracks, one thing that we notice is that the toes are not lined up in perfectly symmetrical arrangements like we'll see in the dog tracks in a moment. If I was to draw an imaginary line across these two leading toes on this left track here and on this right track here, you would see that this toe sticks out ahead of the other toes. And that is toe number three. So when we look at the tracks of these species, we uh, number them. And uh, the numbering system begins with the inner, inner toe here because that inner toe is the closest to the body, to the midline of the body. And on the hind feet of mountain lions, there is no toe one. Uh, toe one has been lost on their hind feet over time. And it, it does show up on the front track as the dew claw. So look for toe number two here on the inside. And then toe number three is going to be your leading toe. Now, if you look at your own finger, Toe number three is your middle finger, and that one is equivalent to this one here on the mountain lion's track. Toe number four is equivalent to your ring finger. And toe number five is equivalent to your pinky finger. So this is the numbering system right here. Toe two, three, four, and five. So you can actually hold your hand up against that and you'll, you will see that they align pretty well with the way your own fingers are uh, oriented on your hand with the middle finger being the longest one and so on down the line to the shortest one, which is usually the pinky. The thumb, of course, is missing on these tracks. So these are both hind tracks of a mountain lion. And so the overall pad shape that we look for on mountain lion tracks is they have this three lobed structure and if you look at the leading edge, there's two lobes. So in effect, it looks somewhat like an M shape or like a trapezoid shape, if you're familiar with geometry. The toe shape on mountain lion tracks is often very distinctly teardrop shaped, as you can see in the, especially in the low, the uh, toe number three and toe number four on these, they're very teardrop shaped. And mountain lion tracks in general are fairly round as are most cat tracks. So that's the asymmetry outline toe pad, excuse me, toe shape and pad shape of mountain lion tracks. Now there is a difference between the front versus hind tracks of a mountain lion. On the left here, you have a front track. This one has a leading toe. Remember we draw that imaginary line across here. Toe number three is further forward and that makes this the right front track. It's the front track because look how big and beefy this pad is here compared to the smaller pad here on this hind track. This is a right hind track, but there's a substantial difference in the real estate that is occupied by this pad here on this hind track. Again, you have those toes that are teardrop shaped and you have um, negative space that trackers talk about and mountain lion tracks is often fairly C-shaped. 
So this is where you would draw the negative space here around the leading edge of this pad. And the front edge of that pad often looks really flat, or if it's very clear, you can see the two lobes that are there. The other thing to look for is that there's no texture in, in this track in the mud here. It's fairly flat and even there's no little bumps in the, the pad. And that's one thing about cat feet is they're fairly smooth, whereas dog and canine uh, feet have papillae on them. So there's little bumps. There'll be little dots in here if you have a good mud track like this. Um, so oftentimes the front track is a little bit more roundish. Uh, it's larger, less elongated, less egg shaped than the hind track on mountain lions. So look for that as well. So the toes themselves are quite small in relation to the size of this large pad here. So this is a front track and looking at the leading toe, it's a right front. This is one of those mountain lion tracks that actually showed claw marks. It was in deep substrate and the claw marks themselves don't go all the way to the base of the toe like they would in a dog because the claws on cat feet are curved and so just the tips go into the soil and unless they're deploying them or, or um, protracting them and pulling them out for traction. Uh, but usually it's just the tips. So if you have a domestic cat, you can look at their, the shape of their claws and they're very, very rounded. And uh, so that just the tip will go into the soil. So um, if you have, the, uh, if I was to outline these little toes here, um, and I'm not going to number them here because we don't really have to number them. But if you pretend that you could pick them up and place them into that pad, you'll see that all four will fit into that pad. And that's very true on the front tracks of mountain lions. Some hind tracks don't show that quite as well. But it is um, one of the things to look for is the size of this pad in relationship to this um, to the size of these toes and how many of these little toes could fit into that big pad. So it's a little different on dog tracks, which we'll see in a moment. Okay, so the other thing to look for on mountain lion tracks is uh, this pad shape. So remember I said that it can be kind of M-shaped. This one's fairly clear right here. Um, and this one's a little bit more obscured. One thing I do notice on, on tracks in dust is that these three lobes on the trailing edge of the pad often are the most clear part of the track. So sometimes the toe detail and the center detail will be obscured in dust. And uh, these, these three lobes here may be all that you see. And a lot of times you will have overlapping tracks. So right here you can see the front track, which was stepped on by this hind track. So the front track, there's remains here. There's a toe there, a toe there and the edge of the pad here, but this hind track is the clearest one and it's, it's on top of that front track. So notice the asymmetry here with the leading toe three, and it's very clear on this track here. So this is the shape of the pad, and I have a front track on the left and a hind track on the right. So you can see there's a slight difference in that these edges here have a little bit of an inward curvature, just slightly. It's more pinched right here than it is on this front track. So right on the front track here, it's a little more straight right here, a little bit wider in this dimension than it is here. So that that's probably um, a good thing to look for. You have the overall round outline of the front and the little more um, pinched, it's pinched to this direction, side to side. So it's a little bit more oval on the hind track. And again, that's mountain lion. And this is a very common presentation of mountain lion tracks where you have the hind track landing on top of the front. So this is the hind right here. And this is the only thing that you see of the front track because the hind track just about direct registered. So if you direct register you your uh, hind track, which is the one on top here, just about covers the front track. In this case, there's still some little bits and pieces here that you can see the evidence of the front track that this hind track was placed on top of. But overlaps happen a lot, so watch for that if you're trying to identify tracks. 
because it's very frequent that you have tracks that may appear to have six toes because there's a, a stray toe over here, but really that stray toe or two actually came from the front track, which the hind track stepped on top of and overlapped. So keep an eye out for that when, you, when you're identifying any tracks, but especially uh, felines and canines. So here is our first dog track. And remember I said the mount lion didn't have little bumpy uh, papillier on their feet. So notice here really closely that if you look closely at that, you can see the bumpy texture of this pad of this dog track. You can also see some indications of fur right here. So this animal had a lot of fur on its feet. You can see these little lines and striations in the mud. But this pebbly texture to the palm you won't see in cat tracks. It does have claws. There are claw marks on all of these toes, some of them a little more subtle than others, but they're very blunt. And uh, those claw marks being blunt is a thing that will help you to tell wild from domestic canines. Symmetry, so if you were to draw a line across the leading uh, edges of these outer toes and do the same thing with these forward, the forwardmost toes, you'll see that it's very symmetrical. There's no leading toe like we saw on the mount lion. You can also pretty much cut this track in half, straight up and down, and imagine folding it over on itself and it's totally symmetrical. The toe shape on dog tracks is a little bit more round or oval than what you see on those mount lion tracks. And the outer toes look a little bit more angular. There's a little bit of an angle right here. Kind of makes these outer toes look roughly triangular in shape. And then the pad size. So the pad size itself is fairly small. And I'll show you in a minute how that, how that uh, shows up in a dog track. So here's your typical dog track with its symmetry and the, uh, the mirror image two sides here. So if you cut it in half, you get the mirror image. It's got nice blunt claw marks. If you were to draw your X for the negative shape here, you would draw through here, follow that ridge and through here. So you've got a little bit of an X-shaped negative space in the middle of this dog track, as opposed to that more C shape that you found in the mount lion, because in the mount lion, the leading edge of this pad was relatively flat and wide. So uh, dog tracks also have, um, it, the front track has a relatively large real estate here, but if you were to, um, move those toes in there, it would fit about two to three toes in the, the space occupied by that palm pad. Whereas in the mountain lion, we saw that it would fit four of the toes. So I just moved those imaginary toes in there so you can see that the dimensions make a difference in canine versus feline. So front versus hind on dog tracks, um, the same with mountain lions, the hind tracks look a little bit more oval more pinched in this direction here. Um, so they're a little bit more egg shaped on the hind and the front is a little bit more round, a little bit wider across here, across these two toes. And so you also have a larger pad right here. So this is the metacarpal pad on the front foot. And it's a little bit larger than the metatarsal pad, which you have on the hind feet. And on the hind feet, sometimes it just shows up as a tiny little round dot. There are edges to it, as you can see here, but sometimes they don't show up. So dogs have front feet that are often larger in appearance than their hind feet. And that can be confusing because sometimes you'll find tracks like this and you'll think, well, how can this be from the same animal if one of these tracks is smaller than the other? And that's just because hind tracks and front tracks have some morphological differences and they will look a little bit different. One way to confirm a front track is to find one that looks like this over here on the left, where you have the perfect imprint of the track here, but you also have this extra little dot right there around the seven, six and the seven on the ruler. And then you have this round dot down here. So this one right here is your dew claw. And this one right here is the carpal pad that's located up on the wrist. So that makes this the front track because the hind track doesn't have this extra dew claw. Although some species of, do or excuse me, some dog breeds do have it. We're not going to go into that because it's, it's kind of rare. And um, 
So if you see that dew claw and the carpal pad, you know you have a front track. And because the dew claw's on the inside, carpal pad's on the outside edge of the leg, that makes this a right front track. So there you have it. There's a few uh, things to look for to tell you if you have mountain lion versus dog tracks. And that's just a really brief, quick run through of some of the things to look for. But a, a little uh, review here, look for the rounded overall outline of the mountain lion tracks. And this is a hind, and this is a hind dog track with a very oval outline. And even the very front, the front dog track looks very oval or very maple leaf shaped. Look for overlaps. Make sure you're not counting extra toes due to overlap with the front track uh, being underneath the hind track. Look for the smooth pads of the mount line with the three lobes. And look for the, the dog track often shows two lobes, but some breeds can show three. So be careful using that as a single characteristic also. Look for the blunt claw marks. And remember that mountain lions can show claws. And so they are similar in dimensions, but those very subtle differences that we just went over should help you to identify canine versus feline in most of the tracks that you find. If you guys want to learn more, there is a tracking conference coming up this weekend, March 18th and 19th, 2023. If you want to register, go to trackerconference.com. And if you want a special discount code, message me on Facebook, private message me on Facebook, and I will get you a special discount code, which will give you the early bird rate for the conference. Uh, I will be presenting something on galls, so if you're interested in learning about that, come to the conference, and I think you'll enjoy it. There's lots of great presentations lined up. Thank you for listening to this presentation, and I hope you've enjoyed it, and continue tracking and your own tracking adventures.